Good morning, Auto 2. So here we go. We're talking about different types of fuel systems. I'm going to give you kind of a survey of them, and then we'll talk about them more specifically, and I'll show you some of these systems on the cars, etc., on cars, etc. So our first fuel system that we have was carburation until about 1980. So here's a four-barrel carburetor that you can see here that's been cut away, and you can see the red lines mark the cutting spots. But this is a carburetor where you have four barrels, okay? This has a pair of primary barrels and a pair of secondary barrels. These open up. Um, there's two types. There's what we call, uh, uh, there's some that are progressive and there's some that are uh, a little bit different, meaning some, the primary open all the way and then the secondary starts and others, primaries open about halfway and then the secondary start opening and things like that. But that's a carburetor. It's a fuel mixing device. That was all the way up until, um, you know, when I say, uh, until about 1980, and then we started seeing computerized carburation showing up uh, approximately 1980 to the early 1990s. This was an attempt to get a leaner air fuel mixture, both for fuel economy and to reduce carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons in the atmosphere. So we thought, well, okay, well, let's apply some computer controls and see if we can uh, make this run a little bit better, at least in terms of fuel economy and emissions. Starting in about 1985, up until 1995, we had what's called throttle body injection. So here's a throttle body injection unit. Actually, let me show you the computer computer controlled carb. Here's a Rochester Quadrajet four barrel carburetor. You can see the two smaller um, primaries and the two very large secondaries. And on this computer controlled carb, um, you can see this is called a mixture control solenoid. And then over here, this white connector, that's called a throttle position sensor. So you can see there's some electronics on this that we're trying to do a little better with uh, gas mileage and fuel emissions. And by the way, it's a bad hair day. Just thought I'd let you know, yep, looking ugly as ever. So here we go. Um, here's a throttle body injected unit. This one has one centrally located fuel injector. If I open the throttle plate and you look down in there, let me see if I can get it to... Look, you can kind of see the nozzle down in there. It's got about 10 little holes in it, and it's going to spray fuel uh, into the intake manifold. It's a fuel mixing device. It looks kind of like a carburetor in some ways, but it's got a fuel injector here, and this is a fuel pressure regulator. It's got what's called an idle air control motor there on the side that's used to determine how much air goes in for idle. There's a throttle position sensor to tell the computer how far open the throttles is open and the rate at which you opened it. Okay, so that's throttle body injection. And then starting in 1968, uh, the early uh, Volkswagen squarebacks and things had a uh, an electronic speed density system, what we call it, but an electronic port fuel injection system. But most everybody else didn't join the, uh, the PFI or port fuel injection electronic uh, club until about 1989. General Motors, one of the first ones to do that, and then everybody joined the club. So here's fuel port fuel injection, what we call PFI, where you have an individual injector for each of the cylinders. There's six, so this is for a six-cylinder Buick 3.8 liter, which was used all throughout the 80s and 90s. Um, uh, these are fuel mixing nozzles, and so if you look down inside there, really carefully if it'll focus on there i don't think it's going to let me move over this way a little bit yep there it is you can see the little pinholes in the end of that nozzle down inside if you look real carefully it is focusing on it anyways this 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 sprays fuel really accurately so the way i like to illustrate this is here's how a carburetor would spray fuel you take this nozzle and it would spray kind of a heavy let me try and get it to where it's, nope, oh, sorry, kind of heavy droplets. I don't know if you can see that or not. Probably can't. Probably can't see those heavy droplets. But a fuel injector is going to go like this and make a really fine mist spray. And again, you, you probably can't see that come in. It doesn't really show up in the camera. But this very fine particulate mist spray that puts oxygen, a lot of oxygen around each molecule of fuel and um, or atom of fuel so uh, fuel injection is going to break the fuel droplets up able to burn them a lot more thoroughly than a carburetor port fuel injection or throttle by fuel injection did pretty good but 
you still have that spray going down and hitting the throttle plate and going down through the intake manifold of runners and tends to make air fuel separation. Port fuel injection, we're in spraying these injectors right at the back of the intake valve, which does a lot better. Direct injection, starting in 05 and a lot of this to the present, although it's not the end all be all. But this is where we put an injector straight inside the combustion chamber. And I've walked away from the camera to grab an injector that I set down here and now I don't see it. So I'm going to grab it over here. Thank you for your patience. This is actually a diesel uh, direct injector. It's metal and it's in the combustion chamber and sprays 10,000 PSI. Um, a gasoline one would look fairly similar, not quite as heavy, and, and gasoline ones will spray upwards of 2,000 PSI typically, and I'm generalizing. Let's keep going here. So here's a carburetor, and, um, and there's a fuel injector, a port fuel injector nozzle. Just obviously this is much larger, this is much smaller. Now we have several of these, but we are killing weight when we go to port fuel. Here's a carbureted system. You've got a fuel tank with an in-tank filter or sock, and you've got a supply line to a mechanically camshaft driven fuel pump that looked like this on a small block Chevy. Um, it was the, I had a can, it actually has its own lobe on the can that comes around and hits this and as it strokes it moves the diaphragm up and down and creates suction and pulls fuel in. Here's a can, mechanical um, camshaft fuel pump that's taken apart so you can kind of see the diaphragm in there and how this thing works as I Pumps up and down, creates some suction. So, and then you've got your carburetor, which is a fuel mixing device with a little inline filter. So, throttle body injection. Let me see if I can correct this a little bit. Can I? Yeah, just a little bit. So, here's a throttle body injection system. This is the General Motors um, two barrel uh, throttle body injection unit or TVI. This is what's on my 92 Suburban. Um, has an electrical lead that goes positive, negative, and positive, negative, and it sprays two cone mist sprays, but they do bounce onto the throttle plates, and that tends to um, break apart the air fuel mix. The difference here is we've got a usually not only a sock here, but we've got an in tank fuel pump. So there's a 30 psi, roughly 30 psi electric pump in the tank because it's 12 volts. Uh, there's no sparking going on, so there's no chance of igniting the, the fuel. And the fuel, these are actually submerged in the fuel, and the fuel actually cools the pump. And we had an inline filter, and we would pump fuel up to the throttle bodies, and we'd return excess fuel to the tank. Let's look at uh, port fuel. And again, I don't like how that's sitting there. Okay. So um, MPFI, or multi-port fuel injection, so we have more than one injector, we've got one, two, three, four, etc. Here is, this is an aftermarket Edelbrock one, but you can see the two there, two there, and there's two here, and there's two over there. It's a four barrel throttle body, and, um, but we're going to have these eight injectors pointing at the back of the intake. We still have a fuel sock, intake pump, inline fuel filter. We usually don't have an inline fuel pump and an intake pump, we usually have one or the other. And then we're going to spray, uh, send this fuel up to the injectors, and we'll dump excess fuel pressure back to the tank. So here's a diesel system. In a diesel, we're going to have an injector nozzle basically into the combustion chamber. Here we'll have an electric pump, an inline fill filter, and usually not an inline pump, usually just a high pressure injection pump. This one we call a lift pump, maybe pushing at 30 psi. This one creating anywhere from 2,000 on up in terms of pressure, maybe as high as 10,000. These are um, mechanically driven, gear driven, positive displacement pumps and make incredible pressure. Okay. Next is direct injection. And this direct injected engine here, we can see two intake valves, blue being the fresh air coming. There's the exhaust. There's the spark plug. And we've got this injector spraying this green gasoline right into the combustion chamber. And you might say, well, why did we move the injector from here at the back of the intake valve to over here? Well, we did it because we figured out that by having the fuel sprayed into the combustion chamber, 
we can run higher compression. We can run an engine at 10 and a half or 11 or 11 and a half, even more compression. Um, and we can still resist detonation because when the fuel comes in, it actually cools the temperature of the, um, the air a little bit in there. And that tends to resist detonation. So that's been the real beauty of direct injection. It's helped on, um, it's allowed us, really what it's done, it's allowed us to run a higher compression engine, get more power out of a smaller engine. So if I can go from a V8 to a V6 and direct inject it, my horsepower and torque might be as much as the V8, but I killed two cylinders, I've killed a bunch of components, or gotten rid of a bunch of components, and the engine's lighter, and weight means gas mileage, okay? All, usually, not always, but um, weight is a big factor in around town gas mileage, and aerodynamics is a big factor in highway gas mileage, although weight does have an effect. This picture here shows an ignition coil over a plug, and there's a direct injector right there spraying fuel into the combustion chamber. And um, what you'll notice that's different here is we're going to have a high pressure overhead cam driven mechanical fuel pump to make roughly 2000 PSI of pressure. We have to have real high pressure because the pressure in the cylinder is high. And so when that injector opens, we want to make sure air fuel comes out. If the pressure in the cylinder is too great, fuel wouldn't come out. Okay. So that gives us a little survey of our systems. And what we're going to do um, is we'll look at some of these systems uh, as time goes by here. Here we go. All right, Auto 2, here we go. Um, I've got my headlamp on. And I'm going to be showing you um, how fuel sprays in a carburetor. Sorry for getting you so seasick there. But we'll look down inside here, and hopefully you can see with my headlamp on, Here's what's called the main discharge nozzle uh, down in here, uh, right there. And then there's another one over here in these two primary barrels. And hopefully you can see those pretty clear. What you're going to see when we run the engine is fuel is going to spray out right there in a stream. And fuel is going to spray out right here in a stream. Again, hopefully it's focusing. So I'm going to rev it and you're going to see a shot. Now, actually, I'll do this right now. Engine's off, and I'm going to hit the throttle plate, and you're going to see fuel spray out there. There's a shot there, and then another one over here. There's a shot there. Hopefully, you can see that I wasn't able to watch the screen. That's the accelerator pump dumping fuel in. So you'll see when I throttle it, the accelerator pump will dump fuel out of here. But as I'm kind of revving it, you'll see fuel spraying out of here. So I'm going to start the engine. You won't be able to hear me talking probably. But you should be able to see it. First, I'll throttle the engine so you can see what's going on down inside there, okay? to see the um, fuel, turn off my headlamp here, you should have been able to see the fuel spraying into the airstream when I accelerated out of the accelerator pump discharge nozzle, and then you should have been able to see the fuel spraying out of the main discharge nozzle. At idle, you can't see any fuel coming out because the fuel is coming out down below the throttle plate, so there's no way for me to show that to you. But I can show you on this carburetor that there's a screw down here underneath. And this is called an idle mixture screw there. One there and one on the other side for the other primary barrel. There it is there. Those two screws. As I go clockwise, that cuts fuel off at idle. And as I go counterclockwise, it lets more fuel in. So we do have an air fuel adjustment at idle on a carburetor. Um, carburetors uh, for off idle air fuel adjustment then what we have to do is adjust the float. In the float, we have to take the top of the carburetor off and, and do some other things. But I wanted you to see how fuel actually entered the airstream on a carbureted vehicle. And we'll look at some others next, all right? So Auto 2, here we are looking at my two-barrel um, GM 
throttle body injection unit. So this is an injector and this is an injector. That's a pressure regulator. This is the wires going up for that thing. You can see the throttle plates opening down inside there like that. And um, what I'm going to do is I'll pause this and then I'll start the car. And, um, and then you're going to see the fuel coming out. I'm going to throttle the engine a couple of times and you'll see it really rain down the fuel. Here you can see it pouring out fuel and idle. And then when I throttle it. Okay, so we just finished looking at that uh, 92 Suburban there. And now what I'm going to do is look at a port fuel car. The 92 was a throttle by injected. This is an 07 Nissan Altima 3.5 liter. Um, it's transverse mounted, so over here on the passenger side of the car, we've got the light out and we've got the front uh, fascia off because we had to replace the alternator. And to do that, you got to take the AC condenser and the radiator out. Anyways. We're putting it back together, but here you can see, I'll move the tool out of the way. Here you can see three coil on spark plug coils or coil over plug coils. Right here you can see the fuel rail, this stainless fuel rail that goes across over here. And there's an injector right there. You can see the wires. Got my finger down on it there. And I can rotate it slightly. Here's another injector here. And that one's a little dark when I put my hand in there, but you can see the injector there. And again, you get a better look at that one there. And then there's a third one right down there. That's a little hard to see. So this fuel line wraps around the engine and goes to the other sides. So you got one, two, three injectors. So this is a port fuel injected engine. It's indirect fuel injection. It's spraying into the intake runners. It's actually... The injectors are actually going down at this angle, this way, spraying at the back of the intake valves on this cylinder head, and they would do the same on the other side. It's got a plastic upper uh, intake manifold and an aluminum lower intake manifold. You can see it there. And again, there's the steel fuel line going around the engine and diving down over there. You can kind of see it back in there. But anyways, so this is an indirect. I don't have any direct injected uh, vehicles here. Because um, they're going to be 2005 and actually newer than that. But you've been able to see, um, in, and obviously I can't run a, a, a port fuel car and actually see the injector spray. But you're able to see the carburetor uh, spray and you're able to see the throttle body injectors spray. And I hope that was pretty cool for you. I think it was. All right, that's for now. See you guys.